Hello, everyone. Um, my name is David uh, Dillis, and um, I was a former postdoc in Christoph Stesimo's group uh, at UNIL, and I'm currently working as a senior scientist in the systems biology group in, in the research division of Roche, PRAT. And what I'm going to tell you today about is a, a project that I started in Christoph's group and continued after hours um, throughout the last couple of years, uh, also during my time here at, at Roche. Um, and it's called Read to Tree, and it's about the inference of phylogenetic trees from raw sequencing data. So let me start with a small introduction. So let's assume that uh, I'm, I'm a nature enthusiast and I like to uh, walk through the forest. And uh, in this forest, I see a nice butterfly here depicted with this yellow and blue colors. And I'm like curious, I want to understand um, what species uh, uh, those butterflies are, um, what are uh, its closest relatives, and specifically in the context of, of uh, doing a phylogenetic tree, I want to understand whether the species is currently uh, invading uh, our ecosystem, right? So if that species, for instance, would fall with, uh, with uh, other butterflies that you find in a very distant location, I would be uh, a bit concerned that uh, right now, the species is invading our own uh, ecosystem, and I might uh, inform some some um, um, conservation uh, organizations. So, how would I uh, go on about it to to uh, to to do that? So, standard would be uh, I take the species and I look it up using some phenotypic characteristics like the yellow color of the wings, this uh, um, blue circles that it has in a in a butterfly guidebook, like for instance the one. Uh, here depicted and check uh, what species it is. But since I'm a bioinformatician, I would take that species and sequence its genome and build a phylogenetic tree to exactly predict what species it is, what relatives it are, uh, et cetera, and so on and so forth, and have a very precise definition of uh, what the species is. So um, in the past or, or still, Actually, what bioinformaticians would do, they would uh, result to um, um, uh, high throughput sequencing. Uh, they would take the, 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 the species, they would generate what we call reads, which are uh, um, fragments with DNA, where we have the uh, ACGT letters. And then what you would do is you would uh, follow a standard pipeline um, where you do some read uh, uh, filtering, genome assembly, error connection, annotation. Then you would infer homology to other species, then orthology to other species. And finally, you would do an, uh, uh, an alignment of the genes. And with this alignment, you could then infer a tree. So you see that this is quite a, um, a big process that is quite time consuming. Um, it requires a lot of different tools uh, that have to be used. And at each step, we can in introduce errors. And uh, usually we would need around 100x coverage for a good assembly. So quite a lot of data in order to, to get to a good tree. So what we propose in our recent paper is to actually sidestep this whole uh, step by using some reference orthologous groups. So these are, for instance, uh, um, uh, the prior knowledge that they are, uh, that this is a butterfly. So we would look for other butterflies and just use directly the output of the high throughput sequencing into our pipeline called read to tree and then do the tree inference uh, directly from there. So we would kind of um, use a single process to sidestep all this, uh, this, the steps before. So how does this process work? Um, let's take here our reads. These are the, the blue lines here and our orthologous groups. So these are um, different uh, gene families from species A to D, which we take from the uh, OMA browser. And then we first would do an alignment. So we would have um, the right nucleotides uh, aligned here. And then we would do a mapping of our reads to the different sequences that we have in this uh, in this data set. And from these sequences, we would uh, build consensus sequences from the reads, so a single sequence representing. And then because we have multiple ones, we would select the best one on some criteria. We would place them back to our multiple sequence alignment, and we would use exactly this to infer a tree. And you see here that our butterfly is very closely related to species D. So this is kind of the inner workings of our pipeline. So now that we have an understanding how this pipeline works, um, we need to um, show that it's actually doing a good job. And for that, we need to characterize it well in terms of um, 
um, uh, how it's working depending on the distance to the closest reference, because we said we need to use some uh, prior knowledge. And then there are different sequencing technologies, so we need to characterize it uh, 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 in regards to this. There are uh, also, we can use different coverages for data, so we can use very little data or a lot of data and see how it works with that. And also um, across different phyla, uh, phyla. So, so here we have examples um, in the publication where we used um, um, uh, Ataliana, which is a tail cress, a, a plant, uh, a yeast, um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and uh, a mouse data set uh, with um, all sorts of different uh, animals. And I'm going to explain to you how we set up this experiment uh, on the mouse data set. So what we want to assess is how well can we place mouse reads into this tree? So how accurately can we reconstruct this tree? So what we would do is we would uh, remove the mouse from this tree and use reads from a different uh, um, data set and, play, uh, and do the whole mapping and then see whether when we reconstruct the tree, it's the same one as it is here. And then what we would do is we would remove more and more data. So then it would be without mouse and rat. So we would remove uh, this here. So we are now the closest species would be 90 million years apart. Then we would remove mouse, rat, and human, and, and other apes. Then we would be already at 312 million years, the closest neighbor, and so on and so forth. And this would give us an understanding of um, how well our tool performs with the closest species being a very distant neighbor. So if we do this, we see here quite nicely when we look at uh, specifically the, um, uh, the tree precision and the tree recall, which are the number of correct branches versus the number of branches that we obtain, that with um, um, close distance and, uh, and large coverage, we have uh, uh, one uh, tree recall and one uh, tree precision. And this is uh, reduced when we are extremely far away. So here we are five and six, so around 600 million years away. And also where we use data with extremely low coverage, here we have um, 0.2x and 0.5x, which are extremely low coverages. And you see that even with this low coverages, we can still place our um, uh, mouse quite well into the tree. Um, um, for for um, for not so distant uh, neighbors as as it's depicted on the top line, and then we can we have to repeat this. So this is an example where we use packed bio as technology, and we can look at into Illumina and Oxford Nanopore technologies, and we see that we do a similarly good job, and even for Illumina, uh, 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 extremely good job in in uh, placing the species to the to the correct place and producing a tree that is very similar to our standard uh, reference tree. So. Um, having done that, we have a good understanding that our tool, um, depending on technologies, uh, coverages, and, and so on and so forth, is doing a reasonable job to place as, uh, uh, the species right and to do a tree, uh, to compute a tree that is, that is quite correct. But the question and the thing that we set ourselves out to do is to show that we are doing um, a, quite a good job in comparison to a standard pipeline. So in order to do this, what we do is we uh, take our reference tree, which is uh, again for mouse or for the tail crest or for the yeast, and we do the reference tree minus our assembly, and then we get some type of um, a distance between the two trees. You see they are quite they're a little bit different here, and we do our reference versus our read to tree reconstructed tree, and then when the difference between the two distance uh, differences is negative, then we would say our tree um, our tool outperforms a standard uh, pipeline. And if we do that and, and, comp uh, and look at just Illumina data, we see that for very close distances, we do a, a better job than assembly, actually. Um, and even for higher distances, we, could, we do an as good job here depicted as, as gray. And then for some uh, species, when the distance is extremely large and the coverages are strong, then the other tools are performing better. What is important to mention here that for extremely low coverages, we cannot even do an assembly for 0 0.2 and 0 0.5x. Um, uh, there is no assembly that, that can be produced. And there we actually are still capable of producing quite accurate uh, trees for all the three species that, that have been tested. So um, 
we can we see the same uh, observation if we look at other technologies. This is just depicted here out of completeness. And we can summarize it that for low coverages, only our tool can actually place the species in the tree and it can do it quite accurate, uh, accurately. Um, for increasing distances and high coverage levels, the standard pipeline starts to produce more accurate trees. Specifically, we see that here for uh, for um, the, the yeast. And uh, for for uh, mouse and for the tail crest, actually ours, our um, our tree generation tool uh, uh, performs better than, than the standard uh, assembly pipeline approach. So this is all uh, uh, nice and good, but we set ourselves out to do to do a simpler uh, process. So we wanted also to show whether the simpler process is faster. And what we see here is a direct comparison um, between the different uh, technologies for the different data sets that we have. And we see quite nicely that our tree, uh, uh, read to tree is around 10 to 100 fold faster um, for, for most technologies and specifically for 20x coverage, we are nearly always faster in, in producing uh, phylogenetic trees. Um, finally, I just wanted to mention that, you know, you might think, so that's cool, but why would you apply such a tool? So in the paper, we show a couple of uh, applications and you can have a look later to, to uh, inform yourself more about those. But uh, specifically, we show one application for um, uh, the, the recent COVID outbreak that we, that we all went through. And here you see quite nicely that we applied it uh, for 10,000 um, um, uh, um, uh, raw uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, data set for uh, um, strains. And you see quite nicely that um, we are capable of placing the different sequences into their right uh, CDC variants that were recognized. Um, and that we also uh, accurately um, recovered the main um, coronavirus genera and all its subgenera. And you see quite nicely that we get here all the different strains. So that's quite nice um, as an application. It's extremely simple to use and we can produce a tree like this in, in quite a short amount of time. So to summarize, um, so what we did in this um, in the study, we produced a, a novel method, a novel tool called Read to Tree, which is a, a simple, efficient tool to quickly obtain phylogenies from raw sequencing read, reads. It is as accurate as a standard pipeline. It is 10 to 100 times faster than the standard approach, and it works for extremely low coverage levels across a range of technologies, which is quite a nice tool. And um, I put you here uh, different QR codes so you can um, read. A, there's a nice blog post about the story behind the, the paper and the project. And there's the paper itself. And also here's the link to the GitHub. And this is the, the, the title of the paper. And, and please feel free to, um, uh, to have a read. Um, I just wanted to mention that this uh, it was definitely a project that was not done only by myself. This was a, a strong collaboration uh, with um, uh, Fritz Sedlacek from the Baylor College of Medicine and, and uh, Christoph Desimo from UNIL and the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Uh, specifically, I want to thank also Adrian and Sina uh, for, for helping out with, with finalizing the project and for doing computations on it and, and helping with writing the paper. And I thank you all for your attention and uh, yeah, enjoy this tool.